going to move on now to coaching. Um, I think I'm right in saying <clears throat> you went straight from finishing playing one season at Burnley into a coaching position. Is that right? The following year? Yes, that's right. Yes, yeah. What was that yeah. like? Um, that was weird, to be quite honest, because I, I actually went to Burnley with um, Chris Waddle um, to, to, to start the coaching um, and to um, be a, a backup goalkeeper for him. This is when I was 30, nearly 38. Um, and it's weird because, like, doing the coaching and, and um, the things that you did, like, more um, jumping over cones and um, running around poles and things like that before you made a save was... Um, was what was sort of on show back then. Um, but I think th the more you do your coaching, the more that you um, see people coaching, you know, it, it's like learning a whole new career. Yeah, yeah, I can relate to that. And what skills What skills do you think you took with you from playing into coaching? What, what, what from your playing career had helped you become a good coach? I think calmness in one and being able to um, relate to goalkeepers I think is a massive thing um, I think they've got to have um, a, a belief in you as well uh, as a as a person what you're saying yeah. um, uh, and you know how, how you come across I mean like and and how you talk to people if they've made a, a mistake um, they don't want that goalkeeping coach to turn around and say, yeah, you should have done this. You should have done that. You, you have to sort of skirt around it, um, then get to the point um, without being too, um, too abrupt and putting people down, which could only, which in my view could turn them against you and, uh, and it make it a, an awkward situation. So it was having a rapport with the goalkeepers um, feeling that they could say to me how they felt and I could say to them um, in a roundabout way, but getting to the point that this yeah. is what I felt as well without being right down the throat and um, making them look bad. Um, but yeah, again, every, like real empathy. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think every coach is different. They have their, their own ways, but um, I'm, I'm really quite an easygoing sort of person. And um I think I'm I'm different to um, uh, when I'm on the pitch to when I'm off the pitch. Uh, all of a sudden, the, the, that inner um, belief and things like that makes you more aggressive when you're on the pitch um, as a player. But um, you have to sort of pull that back in a little bit when you, you're on the coaching side of things. Nice. And then, then any any bits of coaching that you struggled with. Of years which were which you found difficult you said like a completely completely new job um but and any specific bits that we you found difficult um i think considering that you you you, sh you shout at people i think when you go when you um all sorry when you shout at people when you're on the pitch it's ju it just comes natural um but when you sit round and you're talking to people i think that's a, a um a development in um, your own skills, how you put things across. And I, I found that um, difficult to start with. But um, obviously, the more that you do it, the, the, the more comfortable that you are. Yeah, but also like a change in how you communicate with, with players and, and other yes, members of yeah. the coaching team. Brill. Yeah. And then if you were, if one of the goalkeepers that you've worked with was asked to describe you as a coach, what kind of stuff would they say? Um, I would like to think um, knows what he's talking about, um, gets on with things. Training is relative to how I play the game, or he plays the game, and that um, I'm pretty easygoing, but hardworking. Yeah. Okay, bro. Is so then you right you're coaching? Yeah, no, <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to ask one of them. Um, <laughs> You're coaching. Obviously, you've done. I think. I think ten, fifteen years, maybe in the in the Premier League, and then um, you you went with the USA national team um, for for about four or five years as well. 
what was what was that like? What differences were there? How did you find it? Uh, I, I found it really um, interesting and um, a little bit eye opening. It's um, a bit different to when you you join up with the the um, the England national team because like the generally you have a base um, in England, whereas like over in America it was like you probably meet up one week, you'd be in Los Angeles, the next week you'd be in Chicago, or sorry, the next international would be in Chicago. So it was all around the country. And it was more like a, a traveling road show rather than, um, right, here we are, like in England, we've got a like St. George's Park now. This is where we go, we train, we do things, and then we move on to where we're going to play. Whereas um, over there, it was, like I say, this um, road show that sort of had to be split all around the country, um, which was was enjoyable, and, and I got to see the country um, quite a lot, and it, it was interesting that to see just how um, they worked as well. Well, and then what was what was some of the uh, as a coach, you know, who who were some of the best goalkeepers you've worked with, um, and 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 why them? What attributes did they have that makes you say it? Um, <clears throat> well, Nigel Martin came to um, Everton, um, and I'd known Nigel for um, for a number of years, obviously, and we got on pretty well. We're very similar characters, uh, and when he first came, everybody was telling us that um, oh, N- Nigel Martin he, he he won't train, he can't do this, he can't do that. So obviously, as soon as he got there, um, first thing I said to him, "What can't you do with Nigel?" And he was saying. No, I can do everything. Why? So it just goes to show how people like yeah. start stories and everything like. But but Nigel was um, he was different class and he was really good for for Everton. And um, just moving on from Nigel, Tim Howard. Um, so sorry, Chris. Sorry, just to, just to, I, I want a bit more detail. What made him good? Why 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 did you pick him? He's easy going like you. Um, yeah, sorry. He could do um, everything, but go on. What what attributes did he have which made you say that? He was really laid back. Um, he was one of these people that had a laugh in training, but did it at the same time. And his ability um, to make a save, um, to read situations, um, was was really really good. Um, you know, he, he's he, he had that calming influence on the defence, which was very important. So okay, so he reads the game, affects situations. So like good anticipator and and leads his defence, like instructs his defence. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Um, so who is who is the other goalkeeper, Chris? Um, Tim Howard. Uh, we took him um, on loan from Manchester United, and the first time that um, I saw him train, I just knew that he had got something um, special about him. The way he. he caught the ball, the way he moved, um, his sharpness. And um, again, we actually built up a really, really good working relationship. But that took a little bit of time because he he wanted to know what um, my training was all about. And there was parts of it that he didn't um, enjoy to start with. Um, but over a period of time, he would go back to what we were doing and say, can we do such and such again? So. That was the way that I was like saying that you need to build um, that re- re- working relationship, and they believe in you, and you believe in them. So it sounds like there was a bit of like uh, a bit of input from him on what kind of training you did, the types of sessions you did, stuff like that. Would that be fair? Um, I'll, yeah, I, I would always. Uh, listen, I always said to every goalkeeper that I've trained, this is the plan of action. Um, if there's anything that you feel that you need to put in there, then please say, I'm open to anything like that. So Tim, would he would say, I want to do this, I want to do that, um, which I completely um, agreed with what he was saying. And likewise, I'd say, right, we're doing this today and this today. Will you, um, you're happy with that? And he'd say yes. And then the next day. So it was, it, it worked really well. Um, and I think we we sort of actually built up a bit more of a of a friendship rather than just that working relationship. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So you're probably twenty, just over twenty years 
into goalkeeping coaching now. Um, coach Premier League, uh, different levels. You've coached um, international football. Obviously, you've been involved in youth football when you were at Everton um, as well, been involved in the youth system. And now, obviously, we're privileged to have you working with the with the England teams, um, with the under-20s specifically, but then on the goalkeeping camps as well. What, what type of stuff are you seeing now that's different to when you first started either playing or coaching? Um, gosh, I'm, uh, everything's changed to be to be quite. Everything is so much more um, technical, and um, there's there's so much more input from the coaches than whatever there was when we started. Um, I mean, just for me, like I said to you before about delivering things, just my experience of coming on board with 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 you. Um, is that um, the de- delivering p- um, like the set piece play and and everything like that? Everything is so so much more um, professional, should I say? And then and then, what kind of stuff have you seen on the pitch? So specifically from the keepers, what differences are you seeing in the goalkeepers, or how they play the game, or how they train now? What are you seeing? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm seeing like a obviously there's a way that um, that England like to play, and I think the goalkeepers that come into the England setups are all expected to to play. And, and like I touched on it with the, the the back pass, but I mean that is the the, the one biggest thing for me where um, the the big difference because. Most England goalkeepers need to be able to, well, say most, all England goalkeepers need to be able to work that ball with the feet. Now, whether it's passing just to the side or whether you're passing it through longer, everything. So that is a massive thing that I've seen. And and, and it's it's not just, again, with it, with England now. I think that's in, even in the Premier League where it's moved yeah. on and um, you've got like your Manchester Cities with your Edison, who's probably one of the best I've ever seen that can play with the ball at his feet, but um, you know, so it, it has become a really important part of, of goalkeeping training. And um, I, I just, when I look back and think to myself, like the level, like when I've been in with the under twenties and I've been to watch some games and they've been out on loan at teams, I, I just realise how difficult it is for them because. They go to these teams and play on loan and they're probably asked just to kick the ball um, first and foremost as long as they possibly can. But then when they come back in to like, the England setup, then they're asked to actually play the, with this ball at the feet. So it's, it takes a special sort of person, goalkeeper, to actually switch from, from one to, to the... Well, not from, kick, from playing and going long, but from going long to then you know kicking um out passing and and playing the ball yeah, yeah bro so like some adaptability to be able to to one have the the attributes to play long but two be able to to build up short when needed as well and being able to yeah. literally f- flit in between two different styles of play three different styles of play and and be adaptable yes definitely and, yeah. I, and I think and also the mental I think... skills for that as well Yes, yeah, uh, that, that is that is first and for, for I mean, say first and foremost, it, it's so important that you've got that um, mental like strength to be able to do that. But w- w- what I was just going to touch on was the fact that also I think more at international level than at, at club level is that you have the players or the goalkeepers and everything, the players coming in and and trying to. Um, um, assess the situations and, and it's there's more onus on them to actually say this is what we can do uh, and and see the weaknesses in, in the other teams and and put that towards the you know towards the coaches and give them a an eye, yeah, eye yeah. for it so to speak yeah no I get that so so last question on coaching then um young goalkeeper um in the teens really ambitious they want to make it to the top what 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 nuggets of advice could you give them uh i would say watch as much as you possibly can your um senior goalkeepers how they train how they go about 
um, their gym work and and everything so that you can take that on board yourself. Now, I know it's probably easier because you have got the um, the coaches there now to actually put that to them. Um, but just to, to stay focused on what you want from from goalkeeping and, and not, I think as much as I say, watch what other people do, take bits of that, put it into your game and see if that can help you. Um, but you've got to be your own person as well. There's no point in trying to just copy somebody because eventually there's going to be um, something in there that doesn't actually work for you. So, um, but just work as hard as you can and, and listen because um, it's a great life. Brilliant. That's great. Chris, fantastic. I've got um, four kind of like quick fire questions that I want you to answer as quick as you can with, with not too much thought behind um, behind them, just, just what comes to your mind. So first one, what was your favorite training session as a player? Oh gosh, um, sh shooting and crossing. What superstitions did you have when you were playing? I always used to put my right boot on, my left shin pad and my right glove on in that order every single time. Right boot, left shin pad, right glove. Right glove. Interesting. Um, Favourite goalkeeper growing up? Uh, Peter Shilton. Amazing. And then who has been your biggest influence in football? As a young player, I would say Alan Hill um, when he was at Forest. Um, I, I owe him everything to start off in the game and um, how he had the, um, the, the faith in me to um, be a be a, a young, up, good and up-and-coming goalkeeper. Yeah, brilliant. Well, Chris, you know, all I can say is personally, like, just really enjoyed having the chat, having an insight, you know, obviously I knew a lot about your background, but to hear you talk about it and articulate it as well as you have has been amazing insight um i'm sure the people who have listened in and watched feel the same but um massive thank you um i know you'll be back out on the golf course probably in the next half hour because you're loving your golf <laughs> so you've got the right gear on um but no thank, thanks thanks for agreeing to come along it's been fantastic pleasure no i've really enjoyed it thank you Tim.